that. So today my talk topic is uh, building fat, uh, open and collaborative uh, machine learning anywhere at any scale. Actually, this is also a slogan in our, our company, uh, which is called Fatima. Uh, in our company, actually, we our goal is to build a, a decentralized machine learning for both Web 2 and Web 3. Um, yeah, as Chiron already introduced my background, actually, I'm also working on disability system and blockchain. So uh, today, I'm mainly focused on factory learning. Yeah. And uh, so first, let me use three minutes to briefly introduce our company. So Fanimail is a company that, uh, as I just mentioned, to build collaborative AI and even at a scale. So currently, we have mainly focused on building open source library and ML platform, uh, which is make the machine learning operational and easy to use. And simultaneously, uh, especially this month, we start to build a blockchain-based machine learning so that we can have uh, people to train data model and even uh, collaborative train uh, machine learning model and get some reward like token. So we try also try to build some tokenomics uh, for AI. Yeah, so, uh, so the motivation here, why we want to start company in the economic recession, especially this year. So our uh, expectation is that we, we can see a lot of trend here, you can see uh, so privacy regulation uh, becomes a hot topic this year, and also a lot of data generated on urge devices, especially IoT and smartphones. And finally, we can see blockchain, uh, especially Web3, people call it as the next generation of internet. So uh, it's based on blockchain, and uh, we also view that it can protect the privacy uh, especially make people to train uh, trade the trained model and uh, some private data. So we will, uh, Fatima country lies in the three trends, the center of these three trends. Yeah, so, uh, and, and we can also see many user cases in a lot of verticals like healthcare, financial, re retire advancement, and also manufacturing, autonomous driving, and even metaverse. We can see a lot of, a lot of use case uh, in this scenario that uh, may need federal learning and also blockchain. Um, so the way uh, we implement this vision is that we first build the uh, lowest layer, which we call it AI infrastructure layer. Uh, I think this is very similar to the stimulus research, which mainly focus on machine learning uh, system and optimization. So not just machine learning algorithm, we also hope to the, uh, hope the uh, optimization measure and a lot of CV natural processing model can be directly deployed into real world uh, in a deployable and a monitorable uh, manner. So uh, in the launch layer, we have open source library and MOP platform. Later, I will introduce it for details. And in the second layer, actually, we try to enable this AI infrastructure to many worker industry, as I just mentioned, like the uh, industry in healthcare and manufacturing and even internet like recommendation system. So here we mainly focus on building a track layer that can make the federal learning platform adapt to any kinds of application. So currently we already finished the phase two and now we are working on uh, phase three that's make the uh, data economic so that people can train model, uh, trade the model and uh, trade the data. Yeah, so this is the three layer we uh, try to implement this vision. And for AI infrastructure, we have three components. The first one is open source library. Uh, today it's already widely adopted to many uh, industry user cases and also widely used by around 400 university in the world, according to our back, uh, backlog. And also we have Urge SDK that can be uh, extended to Android smartphone and Urge devices uh, like some AWS EC2 Urge server. And also we have an operational platform, we call it a mouse platform that can uh, simplify the deployment, especially federal learning. Uh, so, uh, and also for the Web3 vision, as you can see here, our goal is to uh, try to organize all the contributors in the AI ecosystem, including the machine learning developer, uh, which has the capability to develop different AI applications like CV and NLP. And also we hope the uh, some contributor we, which may uh, who may have a lot of data but they not, may not have the capability to train the model. And third, we also hope to uh, incorporate many uh, other contributors like Wirefire and the contribution assessor which lies in 
uh, in the blockchain ecosystem. So finally, you can help the AI enterprise or uh, end users of AI to uh, to get this uh, result from the entire community. So that's a that's why we we, we claim our company as the community built uh, open and collaborative AI. So uh, recently, we also tried to write a paper that is a white paper to present this vision. So we call it trustworthy proof of contribution uh, for federal learning. Actually, it's not just federal learning. Uh, we hope to migrate to general uh, general machine learning problems. So, but as a as a first step, we start from federal learning. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, in order to understand what is uh, Web three and and tokenomics, so here is, is an example that uh, you can use this as an AI application, which is similar like the AI Apple Store in uh, like the Apple Store that you have a lot of applications like Uber and YouTube, you can direct download to your smartphone and use it. So here is the same thing, but a little bit different that we hope to uh, monetize the uh, like the model, like data set and even the training tasks so that people can join and contribute and finally get a reward. But the reward is not the, like the cash, like the US dollar, but it's like a, a to token. Yeah, so that's, so we summarize it as the three phases of our vision as tokenize the AI application that build on a fundamental infrastructure. So we have three phases, infrastructure, application, and finally we can tokenize it. So that's the idea. So here is the traction, just leave it a background. So we have 2000 GitHub users and around more than 10 industry collaborators. And currently we have some pending contract. And in the platform, we have six, uh, 700 developers who are using it uh, weekly, uh, because this is for training platforms. So normally people may uh, just use it once uh, per week. So currently we can see the DAU of this platform is around uh, 50. So it's not very high, but it's very valuable uh, platform. Yeah, so here the, uh, the number I just uh, made, a, made a screenshot from our backend system. As you can see, uh, we have around six, uh, 700 platform user and the, the community, especially in the Slack, we have more than 1,000 uh, users, yeah. So here are some examples how federal learning can help the real world. Actually, these are uh, real user cases that we um, get from uh, our B two B customer. So I remove all the logos of our collaborators and partners. Uh, so here are uh, three examples. The first one is healthcare and um, and uh, healthcare monitoring. As you can see here, that uh, we can do some. Federal learning for medical AI because in this case privacy is a, uh, the primary concern, and also we can have uh, end users to directly monitor their uh, health uh, using smartphones, so we can directly train on smartphones. But here the model is not, it's very lightweight model; it's not like giant model like foundation model uh, because the resource is very constrained here. And the second use case is like logist and retail. Normally we need monitoring service. So this is computer vision based. We need some camera to, uh, for example, check the driver's uh, identity and also directly identify the vehicle automatically and even the parking lot. So that make, can make the logistic uh, more efficient. And also we may need some monitoring for smoke uh, and activity detection like a Walmart. And finally, we also uh, find that further learning uh, may be very helpful in internet business like the uh, web 2 and web 3 for example we can build a decentralized recommendation system and advisement uh, in web 3 so here's a, an example that we recently started with our uh, partner yeah so this are uh, a, a brief introduction of our uh, company so next next i will start to dive deeper into some research uh, that i thought uh, under this situation so my research flavor is a bit, a little bit, uh, a little bit different from, uh, for example, the university like academia. So currently, I, my research is mainly driven by a real world problem, especially the problem I discussed here. That's how to implement the vision of Fenomena company. Uh, so uh, we start uh, thinking about this problem uh, backwards, meaning that we uh, try to understand the customer's problem and then try to find some machine learning tools to solve that problem. Yeah, so, uh, so uh, before dive, uh, diving into the details of uh, my research flavor and some uh, practical problems, so here's a background to help you to understand how federating uh, become popular topics in the past three years. 
So as you can see, uh, one trend is that people uh, want to train the model big, uh, larger and larger, especially the foundation model. People talk a lot, like GPT-3, GPT-4, and even uh, large-scale transformer models, which may cost billion dollars to finish one round of training. So the trend uh, is driven by a real-world problem, like the problem uh, Alpha 4, GPT-3, and, and if Alpha Go, uh, Alpha Go game. So this kind of uh, AI application normally require a lot of data and TB and PB level data, and also huge compute, uh, which may need 1,000 GPU to finish the training. And also the neural network is very big, may, may have billion and even trillion level uh, number of parameters. Uh, compared to 10 years ago, it may only have two GPUs to uh, do parallel training for NXNet. Uh, but factory learning uh, is driven by another trend that we cannot train such large model on public data. So what if we want to train model in private data? For example, G, uh, GDPR in Europe and the CPRA in California, as you can see, the privacy and legal, uh, uh, these two laws may raise a lot of uh, legal issue for, especially for internet company. Uh, and also another trend is that commercial interest should be protected, especially in medical AI uh, domain. And finally, we can also see some resource constrained problem. Uh, normally, you cannot connect this big data into the cloud. For example, in autonomous driving, in satellite setting, we can see some real user cases according to our uh, research in, in USC lab. Uh, so this is uh, why we need federal learning. Um, and uh, so uh, since uh, I guess maybe some audience in this uh, talk may not understand the basic idea in uh, mathematic form and uh, machine learning, uh, especially optimization wise. So uh, let me briefly introduce it. So foundational learning means that as first gaining, actually it's a distributed optimization problem, but we, if we transform it to a distributed system, it works like this matter. So first the server will try to sync uh, a global model to the client. So as, as the figure shows here, so uh, each client may receive a W represent the uh, global model and the, each client will train the model on each client uh, on its local data. So this data is private data. It will never leave the, the client's operating system, just to stay there. And then uh, what we do is, is still use SGD like, uh, to optimize it or some variant of SGD like Adam or SGD with momentum. So once the client finishes the training, we'll sync up the, uh, the updated model like the WT plus one to the server and the server will do uh, aggregation. For example, the most likely aggregation is according to the number of samples in each client. Yeah, this may not be a fair aggregation or, or effective aggregation, but uh, in general, you can understand this is aggregation uh, aggregator measure that lies on the server side. And once the aggregation finished, the server will sync up the WT plus one to time. So this is the entire process of one round of federal training. Uh, so the uh, the beauty of this kind of algorithm is that we can protect the privacy for each client because uh, the data is, is fully packed here. You only synchronize the W. Especially nowadays, you, if you use deep neural networks, the deep neural network is very hard to be reversed to get the raw data. If you use some uh, shallow network, yeah, it, it, it may still uh, leak, leak some privacy of the raw data. So, uh, and, uh, and in many user cases, for example, this, the next figure is the first user cases uh, released by Google. Actually, they, they put this measure for the keyboard in, um, in Android smartphone. So when you type, you can uh, it can predict your next word. Uh, so, so they don't need to upload the chatting log, the typing uh, log message to the cloud, but they can still train this next word prediction model. Uh, yeah, so this is the background. Uh, but, uh, but this is not enough for a real world problem, as you can see here. Uh, when we synchronize the model to the client, uh, we, we may need, uh, if the bandwidth is not high, we may need, uh, be, it may become a communication uh, constraint problem. So we have to do some compression to guarantee that uh, the communication is also efficient. And also from the client perspective, you can see uh, here the, uh, the DK. So I summarize on the left side. So DK in each client may be different. So it's a data heterogeneous problem. And also the system is heterogeneous, meaning that different clients may have different power for computing and memory. Uh, the, the amount of the memory may also be different. And, and finally, uh, when we synchronize uh, the weight back and forth, we can also see uh, what if some users want to, uh, are malicious users, 
and what do we want to attack the system. So security and privacy are also uh, very important in this kind of research. So uh, finally, we can see federated is very uh, interdisciplinary research that lies in statistics challenges, like how we can do this visual optimization uh, for live ID data and uh, personalized uh, distributions from different clients. And also we how we can make this system trustworthy. So my perspective for trustworthy is not just about price and security. We also hope to uh, make the system more uh, fair, meaning that if you, if I uh, one client contribute, it can, should get some uh, fair reward. So that's why we also want to dive deeper into blockchain to understand how to prove of the contribution. So how we can assign token more fairly. Yeah, and, and not a third part is about system. Yeah, uh, as I just mentioned, this essentially this is just a distributed system, but this distributed system is not like the cloud computing based training system uh, because it involves a lot of edge devices and which are um, system heterogeneous. So this kind of distributed system is much more difficult than the cloud-based distributed system. So we need a lot of optimization, uh, even including uh, multi-cloud computing and wireless communication, how, we, how to optimize the bandwidth uh, scheduling, a lot of open problems there. And finally, of course, uh, the entire AI infrastructure should support a lot of uh, applications. So due to this kind of uh, interdisciplinary flavor of this research that's why we can see federal learning uh, uh spans in different conferences including system machine learning ai and all, a lot of traditional domains uh, including uh, blockchain and even some efficient hardware design to accelerate local training yes and, and in uh yeah here is the background uh actually this is a summarization uh, in usc lab so uh, before I doing this startup, actually, I was doing research there as a PhD student. So uh, essentially, in USC lab, we mainly focus on these three problems. The first one is fundamental algorithm design, especially machine learning algorithm. But this kind of uh, machine learning algorithm is a little bit uh, different from traditional machine learning ICML loops because we also involve some constraint in the real world, especially like, like heterogeneity problem. Yeah. And the second part is about system-wise uh, algorithm research, how to break the uh, resource constraint problem and how to scale up the system to million level of users. Uh, if you think about the million level of users, this never happens in cloud computing, uh, especially, the, uh, uh, for example, even for GPT-3 kinds of model to training, uh, you still, the number of GPUs is just uh, maybe 2,000 at most, right? Uh, as far as I know, at most 2,000 of GPUs to finish the training. Uh, but in federal learning, we need many level of users. So the problem here, the scalability here is even a more challenging problem. Yeah, and, and finally, of course, trustworthy, as I mentioned, how to guarantee the privacy and security of the system since it's uh, trained in the wild and uh, so you don't know where the edge device is located and what happened there. So uh, we still need some security aggregation and resilient model aggregation measure on the cloud to guarantee the, uh, the robust of the system. Yeah, so uh, so uh, next I will dive deeper into uh, these four parts. Maybe uh, I only select three of them uh, since we, we only have one hour to finish the talk. Yeah, uh, so uh, the here are four kinds of problems. Actually, now it becomes the main focus of Fedema company. Uh, in our RD team, we, we do have some research intern and research scientists. So we try to tackle real world problems uh, but our main focus in research why is just these four kinds of problem. So first problem is about how to make the system scalable and robust. So here the goal is try to make the system deployable and can meet the demand from our customer. So I think this is a, uh, that's why I, I want to highlight this one as a first uh, research focus because this is the fundamental for all, all the other organizations. So we, if you don't have a robust system, we don't, we don't have a scalable system, we cannot land all the other organizations into real world. So that's why I put this as our first priority. The second part is about the efficiency, like, like how to uh, train on resource uh, resource constraint or devices. The third, third part is about how to make the learning more accurate, especially when we don't have enough labels, whether we can do semi supervised or, or even self supervised learning. Uh, and finally, uh, of course, we, we should consider about uh, privacy guarantee and security. So these are the four problems in our company. Uh, uh, why we want to tackle these four problems? So here I use six examples to tell you 
uh, the motivation. So these six uh, industry and the workers actually is the, uh, according to our user survey in the past six months. So in the past six months, we touched around more than 100 medium sized and small companies, uh, which may not have enough uh, AI capability, especially if they don't have a machine learning team or they have a machine learning team, but the team is very small. So we talked with them and we and try to understand what the problem there. Uh, so if we, we summarize uh, key challenges in each industry. For them in healthcare, we find that small data and labor deficiency may be the key problem. Normally they don't care about the efficiency because they normally have powerful GPUs to uh, to accelerate training and also the bandwidth is, seems very high according to their system design. And also the key challenge in um, manufacturing actually is more like communication cost. Uh, for example, if you want to do training on some factories and, and earth device, earth servers like uh, world markets, for example, you want to install or a server for the, there to connect some video streaming from the smart camera or in that case. Actually, that's a server is still very powerful, but the issue is that the bandwidth is, is very low. Meaning that if you want to do collaborative training across different Walmart store, the problem is that the bandwidth may be a similar like the bandwidth we do uh, in, in our smartphone. Yeah, that's what we know from that scenario. And also in financial industry, people concern more about street and pricing. So normally the model there is very simple, like the GBDT or even logistic regression can solve their problem because they have rich feature space. So just use a very live logistic regression, you may solve the problem. But but what their main concern is about security and pricing. So this is the uh this is the highlight of financial industry. And for force, uh the fourth one, like Web3. For example, decentralized uh, data. Web3 is a decentralized system, right? So data is distributed. So in here, people more concerned about proof of contribution and how to dispute the reward. Because once I join the project, I hope to get a fair reward, especially if I want to get some token. And and the last on uh, the last two is about resource scheduling and data management, like multiple cloud computing. And and finally, for automated driving, the problem is very similar, like the manufacturing like IoT setting. Uh, you, you can also use automatic driving the vehicle on, on vehicle computing, uh, very similar like IoT computing. So the memory and computation is constrained. Uh, it's not communication cost, maybe sometimes, yeah. So based on this, now you can understand why I summarize these four directions are uh, our, at, at the highlight of our company's key focus, yeah. Yeah, so I, I think I cost too much time for uh, it's background introduction. So if, uh, here I want to stop just uh, uh, a few seconds. Do you have any questions? <clears throat> Great. Um, thank you, Xiaoyang. So uh, if, if any of the participants, you have a question, uh, please feel free to uh, use the raise hand function or type in the QA and then, you know, I'll read out the question to, to our speaker. Yeah, yeah, okay. So let me continue. Yeah, so uh, after background introduction, let me uh, focus on the first part, the system design. So let me uh, move this part quickly. Uh, so this is a paper that we published two years uh, two years ago at New York's Federal Learning Workshop. Uh, at that time, we launched Federal Learning Project. Uh, at that uh, two years ago, we called the research library and benchmark for Federal Learning. Uh, at that time, we uh, we can see there are four existing library from industry and academia, like for example, the leaf dataset is from CMU, uh, but they do not provide strong assistant deployment for real world. They just a simulation framework for researchers to try different data sets. And TensorFlow Federate uh, is also a simulation framework. Uh, although Google already lent their federated learning system in smartphone, like Android smartphone, but they did not open source this uh, TensorFlow Federated Learning System. So we don't know what happened there. And especially for research, it's not that friendly for us. So, so that's why uh, it motivates me to develop this library. Uh, so uh, the first challenge we want to solve is about uh, bring the re uh, bridge the research gap. Uh, in machine learning community, we can see people just write a lot of simulators there. So this simulator mean, meaning that if you want to simulate a distributed optimization algorithm, just write uh, you, you do not have communication component, just call function and do peer-to-peer uh, -peer function directly call it. We, it's not about real-world computation. And also you just run in a single machine and single GPU and, and sometimes even just CPU computing. 
But the real world, we need distributed computing and all device training for mobile device and cross sign off for different organization. So how we can migrate the simulation algorithm into real world? That's the first question I want to answer in federal learning library. And also we can see a lot of real case that requires different communication topology, including not just about centralized topology. We also see a decentralized hierarchical world for federal learning, especially in bank industry and also speed learning. Uh, but existing distributed training library does not support so many different diagrams. So um, that uh, paradigms. So I think it's very important to have a flexible library to uh, build any kind of algorithm and then migrate it into real world. And also at that time, we don't have enough data sets because this is, is built based on private data sets. So, so we try to release more data sets and more realistic partition, uh, especially for line partition. And then also we build a lot of benchmark algorithms that are released by uh, published by Neurop CPR and uh, Clear. And so that motivates our, our design. So the so design, uh, the key philosophy here is that we hope researchers just write once and run everywhere. Uh, that means you, if you just run a single, uh, single long simulation, we, we can help you to train in different uh, scenario. Actually, this is quite similar like a recent startup called AnyScale. So in any scale, there goes the even underlying, even low level layer. So they just try to make the distributed computing uh, very easy to program. For example, you just program on laptop, but you can still scale up to real world. So here is a similar idea that we hope researchers just program in a standalone manner, but we can still do distributed training on any kinds of device. And, and the API is very simple, just a, a few lines. Uh, so here I just skip it. And, and also definitely we, we support a lot of models and different platforms. Uh, essentially the uh, idea, so here is the architecture overview. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, so uh, I, I will just introduce this one later. So here is the key design. So in, in traditional dispute SCD, actually uh, the main idea is about using or reduce. For example, we can synchronize the gradient with, with different uh, GPUs in the cluster. But in federal learning, if you do this matter, it cannot cover many scenarios like the asynchronous chain. And also, for example, the how, how about we want to do a five grain, five grain design for each client and also for the server aggregator. So, so that's why we make it as a worker oriented programming. And researcher also call it event based uh, program, means that we directly do peer to peer communication among the client and server and also among different clients. So by this way, the benefit that, as you can see here, we can customize the message, means that you can transmit what kind of message, what type of message as you like, or according to your uh, origin design. We can also define different topology, as I just mentioned, for different scenario, you may need different network topology to handle training. And also, um, based on this idea, you can define different messages. So the training flow is not necessary to be a or reduced based matter. You can have different uh, algorithm flow, like a different algorithm protocol. It's not less really like the parameter server kind of pattern. You can de design whatever algorithms you like. And also we try to have researchers customize the trainer, meaning that uh, in the trainer, uh, maybe uh, it, it can be adaptive to any kinds of uh, models, uh, a CV model and uh, NLP model, and even some uh, traditional model like logic regression, GPT. So, that's why we make the training very flexible for users to customize. You can set different trainer function and test function. And, and by this way, our system design can help you to uh, run everywhere. So, um, so after uh, doing the standard, we might uh, we upgrade the uh, open source library a lot in the past six months. So until today, we have 2,000 uh, GitHub star and 400, uh, for around 400 GitHub folks. And we have well maintained documentation website. And also, so here I think this is very important that we provide more additional algorithms for federal learning, especially for security and privacy. Uh, because when we land federal learning algorithm into practice, normally privacy and security is even more important than machine learning algorithm design. So here you can see uh, we support dif uh, differential privacy, including central DP and local DP. We also support a lot of attackers to have researchers to check and audit the system whether it's robust to different attackers. And also we have some defender measure uh, baseline. And also we do have some screw uh, multi-party computing, computing algorithm. So these are patented by our company and uh, 
also we did a lot of research in the past, especially in USC lab, uh, USC research lab. We have uh, released many uh, screw application algorithm. And also we upgrade the framework, making it compatible to any kinds of deep learning framework, including uh, PyTorch TensorFlow and even JX, which is very popular recently. And we also uh, make it uh, useful in both cross silo like the healthcare uh, different uh, AWS machine, and also including smartphones and, and including simulation. So, so here is an example of the training on smartphones. This is a UI we provide the SDK. So you can install this SDK to serve your application. Uh, and on the right side is the uh, IoT devices. So in both these two settings, normally we run some small models for the software problem. Yeah, and also we upgrade a little bit about the operating system. Uh, so like the MOPS. So machine learning also requires a, a very powerful operating system because we hope to uh, make the entire for loop, in, in, entire loop of the uh, the training cycles, for example, we do data pre-processing, uh, pre training, surfing, monitoring, and control. It's, I think it's a loop, so that's why uh, I think we should have some easy to use operating system for factory learning. So, uh, so let uh, let me briefly introduce uh, this operating uh, this MOPS. So in MOPS, we have uh, as I just mentioned, you can write once and run everywhere. In MOPS, the way we do it is a little bit different from uh, the previous uh, research kind of library. So uh, we do it just by build a library. For example, we can build some package like server client, and then we can upload this package to MOPS, and then we can directly log in your Earth devices into, uh, into the cloud. So by this way, our MOPS can directly distribute the package to, each, uh, to different clients uh, through this agent. For example, the agent here, uh, can directly download all the packages and the, then the server, especially the MOPS, will orchestrate uh, different clients and start the training. So by this way, you don't need to type commands machine by machine and then um, orchestrate by using very complex commands. So here is just using this UI uh, to finish the training. So here is um, uh, the UI uh, example. So for example, we can upload package here and then we can invite collaborator and then we can train together under this group. Uh, so that's a, a UI design. Maybe it's more um, more vivid to directly show you our platform here. So you can directly go to fedemail.ai. So here is our open platform. So under this platform, let's use this uh, Octopus as an example. In, uh, so we have different platforms, like Octopus is for cross-signal training, especially like hospital and different organizations want to collaborate together. And Beehive actually is like B2, uh, uh, actually it's just for smartphones and IoT, and Paris is our simulator. So, uh, and, and here you can see this is a map that is uh, the machines that people already bind to our, uh, our platform. So uh, they're from US, North America, and also China, Maine, and, and uh, Korea, Japan, and, and also many users from, uh, I can see many users from Europe. Yeah, so. Yeah, so this is our, uh, yeah, let's go here. So under here, we have a very easy to use guidance for you to uh, to do this operation. As I just mentioned, first you just bind your device. So for example, you just type one line command like FedMA log, log in to your Edge server. Uh, and then the Edge server can be observed by this platform. For example, I bind my uh, laptop here. Then you can see uh, my lab floor here. And then what I do is just invite my collaborator. For example, I copy this link and send it to friends. Then the friends will see an uh, invitation whether agree to join the collaborative training. Once we have this, I can see my friends in this list and then I directly uh, build a group with my collaborator. So for example, in this group, we can see a lot of device and we, then we can use it uh, during training. For example, here is uh, some project. Let me use this one example. When you start, when you create a run of training, you can set different devices. For example, I can select a device in Canada and also uh, Europe, and then we can select the public cloud server. And also definitely in our platform, we can have researchers deploy their private server. So it just support both public cloud and private cloud. And simultaneously, you can select the uh, application. For example, I want to use uh, this application example for the mini standard logistic regression. 
So this is a very simple example. Once you select this application, you can directly start. So we don't need the researchers to code this application. Uh, since we have an application store, for example, you want to do monitoring uh, under the smart camera setting. So you get directly import this YOLO V5, and then you can start collaborative training. For example, in host hospital setting, you want to do X-ray classification. Uh, that's also very easy. You just uh, uh, go here and start your training. You just log in your device onto your Arch server. And when you start training, you can select the, for example, let me use the healthcare, the X-ray as an example. You, once you select the X-ray, actually the model will be different. For example, the dense net and the different, uh, different hyperparameters as default, you can turn the hyperparameters here. Yeah, so in, under your my application, I can also see we can also see a lot of uh, a lot of uh, different applications that's developed by yourself or from the marketplace, as we like the app ecosystem. And and once we start the training, the UI will looks like this matter. So for example, here uh, we can see the experience tracking. So this kind of experience tracking is a little bit different from the traditional machine learning MOPS because. We also need to care about the, uh, the, the performance on each device. For example, we have a system metric to understand what happened in each device. For example, we can know how, how long the server wait for the aggregation and how much time cost for communication. So by this way, we can optimize the system to know the bottleneck, whether there's a straggler problem, uh, whether the communication is a bottleneck or whether the computation or memory we should optimize. So yeah, we, we hope to make the system more monitorable so we can bring some insight to our customer. And also we provide a very useful distributed login, meaning that you can directly observe uh, to check the log on each Earth device. Uh, this is very different from cloud computing. In cloud computing, you always have a centralized log to check everything. But in Earth computing, we, we still need this kind of log to see whether there are bugs in a specific device. Yeah, according to our in experience in practice. Yeah, so this is the uh, MOPS. And uh, I think it's, uh, I already finished the uh, in, entire introduction system-wise. Uh, actually, to, in order to finish the entire system, we uh, actually, we made a lot of efforts. Uh, if, if you want to publish, publish all this effort as paper, I think we can have 10 papers, but currently in our company, we mainly focus on production. So uh, later, maybe we will summarize the system as a paper and, and try some system, machine learning system conference, yeah. Okay, yeah. So this is our application layer, as I just mentioned. We hope to the we hope the platform can accumulate uh, uh, can accumulate more applications for our customer. So we have to uh, guarantee that the system is adaptive to any kind of application. Uh, so the design here is by using uh, some abstraction. So for example, as I mentioned, the trainer aggregators should be very abstract to different uh, loss function, different. Uh, different training function and also different security protocol here. Yeah, so this, uh, and we first upgraded as this application ecosystem. I just, uh, I think I already shown the, oh, I forget to show you the, the way to use it. For example, you want to use this application directly, you can go here to find the uh, open source. So each application actually is just uh, open source library on GitHub. And if you want to train it, you can directly import my application. So the import will directly go to uh, your application here. And later, if you start training, you can directly use it. So uh, so by this way, we can uh, make a machine learning uh, even usable by some SD. For example, some SD may not have machine learning background. So using this platform, they directly turn the hyperparameters, for example, turn some learning rate and different number of uh, uh, runs, and they directly check the curve and see uh, whether it can get the best performance. So they don't need to have a very strong machine learning background. Yeah, so this is the system design. So I will stop here. Any question? Right. Again, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to raise your hand or type in the QA box. Okay. Um... Yeah, next part is about, yeah, I, I know the, the first part may, may not be very uh, interesting for researchers because it's more like uh, product and system design. Yeah. So, uh, so this part, I will highlight three algorithms. Um, so first one is about urge call uh, collaborative learning. So urge call collaborative learning, uh, our idea here is that we hope the urge devices have a lot of small models on 
third because they are resource constrained, but they can directly collaborate to these foundation models. Uh, so this is our basic idea here. We are trying to improve and upgrade the MOPS and going through this direction. And uh, the way we implement this vision is that we hope to have some monitoring surface. For example, we have SDK installed on Earth device, so we can see what happened, especially like data drift problem uh, is a serious problem in practice. For example, you train a model on cloud and then you deploy, find the accuracy uh, may degrade a lot when you deploy it into real world. And, and once we have this monitoring surface, we can diagnose and control the system. Uh, the way we control is a little bit different from other systems that so we try to leverage the knowledge of foundation model. Uh, so by this way, we can transfer knowledge to some small models and, uh, and further uh, mitigate uh, like the data drift problem and also improve and, and con we can, actually we can call it a continuous learning, but it's not, uh, it's not the same definition as the uh, like online learning kinds of con continuous learning. Yeah. So in order to achieve this goal, uh, I have a paper published around two years ago in Europe. So this is the, uh, the first idea I have for this uh, entire MOPS loop. Uh, so first, uh, what I'm thinking is about training a large CN model, for example, ResNet on your smartphone. This is not viewable two years ago. Even until today, we can still, still cannot train such a big model on your smartphones, uh, especially in this case. Uh, so the way uh, I'm thinking is, is about uh, uh, yeah, I think this background I already, already introduced it. Yeah, so I'm I'm thinking uh, to formulate as, as as a new problem. So you see, uh, we have to transfer data to the cloud. This we call it centralized training. We have to transfer model back and forth between client and server. We call it federated training. So I'm thinking whether we can have another diagram uh, diagram that we call it knowledge transfer. So the way uh, we do it. Oh, there's a question here. Do you have some framework that can for automated driving? Yeah, for automated driving, actually, we are doing it uh, with our customer. Uh, so the question is that whether uh, we have some framework dedicated for autonomous driving domain. Uh, yeah, so for automated driving, uh, as far as know, currently, uh, the main issue is that we don't have an on-device training engine there, especially for automated driving setting. But in our recent case, we collaborate with our customer that's a resource constrained device installed on the on vehicle. So that's also, we can install some Python package there. And also we can install PyTouch and TensorFlow and do on device training. But the main challenge is that the memory is, is, is bounded by the device. For example, the, the memory is only one gigabyte. So how we can train tiny model there. So that's why I'm, I'm thinking to have this framework. So hopefully we can release this product this year, as I mentioned here. For example, let's say this model, small model on autonomous driving, and, and especially on the vehicles. So how we can bring some knowledge from foundation model on the cloud. Yeah, so this will be very interesting problem to improve the accuracy there. So in this paper, actually the high level idea uh, is very specific idea for this, uh, this vision. Uh, so as I just mentioned, I hope to transfer knowledge uh, kinds of machine learning paradigm. So, the way we transfer logic is different that we hope to transfer logic from some, a lot of compact model, like small model on your Earth device and transfer logic to large uh, GN, uh, large DN on the server side. So the benefit of this transfer learning is that we can train very giant model by directly leveraging uh, the resource on, on device without leading to transfer the data back and forth. Yeah. So the high level idea here is that we uh, use bi-directional uh, legislation. So compared to existing working legislation, we normally have teacher model and student model and transfer knowledge. But here we uh, first cut the model into two parts. So one part is a feature extractor we put into the client side. Another part is the server side model we put on the cloud. So the server model normally has many number of layers, but for the feature extractor, we put just a few number of layers. For example, three uh, layers, uh, CN layers. And then we add a classifier so we can train a small model, compact model there. And the idea is that we uh, train locally, we extract some hidden features and transfer to the server. And this hidden feature can represent the raw data. And then we can do a synchronous training here and also bring some knowledge distillation idea. For example, we can extract some soft label to the cloud uh, and then we can train therefore 
the giant model. So the way we do it is just not just one client transfer, we transfer many clients' knowledge to the server side. So the server model will be trained in a manner that take all the inputs from input from all the client. And, and we also have a bi-directional -dire design that we can transfer back, meaning that we have the server that has some um, output of the logic, then we transfer back. The idea of uh, the benefit of transfer back is that uh, we, we can boost the performance for small models. So until today, we still try to improve this framework to make it high performance, more efficient in practice, and even redesign a little bit of this uh, noise transfer uh, algorithm. So yeah, uh, so I, I guess you must have some background in noise transfer. So it's a paper published in SUIPR 2018. Uh, and the idea that we have teacher model and student model, and we can do a uh, bi-directional transfer, essentially the idea that we just add some uh, care divergence loss function. So this loss will take the logic, especially the output from, from the soft mass function, and then we can correlate the relationship of this two neural network and add to each uh, teacher and student model. So we can mutually transfer the knowledge. So essentially I just borrow this idea and migrate to battery lane setting, but used for you know, small and giant model and also for multiple model transfer to a single model. Yeah. And uh, if you formulate it, it becomes a bi-directional, especially alternative minimization problem. Uh, we can find a good small feature extractor and larger uh, classifier on the, on the cloud side. <clears throat> yeah, so this is uh, from the optimization perspective, alternative minimization meaning that we train client side, uh, we fix the global parts of the mod of the cloud side. When we train the server side, we just fix the the weight from the client side. So by this way, we transfer knowledge back and forth, and finally it get converged. But the problem is here that uh, when I was running the experiment, I find that the live SD may not work high performance in this setting. So we tried many different variants. Finally, we find that local SD with momenta and cross-run learning rate scheduler may have the performance a lot. Uh, so by this way, actually it's very promising that by this way, we can train first more model on smartphones, um, um, and then on the server side, you can get a giant model trained, get high performance. So by this way, we can uh, leverage the private data on this, this client and train a giant model on the server side. Yeah, we, we run the experiments by using a GPU server on the cloud and different, uh, actually just CPU device to simulate the, uh, the training. So in order to achieve this algorithm, actually we also need Fatima framework as you can see, the transfer back and forth, the not uh, the information we uh, com communicate and transmit back uh, from client and server are quite different from distributed training on the cloud setting. So that's why we also have the motivation to develop federal learning library to make it a very uh, efficient based peer to peer communication. So that's why we can customize different messages. You can see we, we can also not just transmit uh, the model weight, but we can also transmit hidden representation and logic. Yeah, so this is, uh, uh, and, and as for result, I just tell you some uh, uh, basic result here, like the communication efficiency, we can see it reduced around uh, at most 100 times and reduced a lot of computational power. Uh, but in, in, in prequel, you can understand that the client model is very small, so that's why uh, we can make it much faster. And also we only transmit the hidden actors, so that's why it's more efficient compared to uh, the entire model transfer. And after this, uh, so have a summarization here that, uh, so this paper is very memory and computation efficient, especially for client training. And also it can reduce the communication frequency because we can locally train it for many runs and then synchronize to the server. And also we can uh, reduce the communication bandwidth requirements because we don't need to synchronize the entire model. And also it's public data free because in the server side, we don't need to uh, have any data, but, but of course, if you have some public data, you can boost the performance and make it even better. And also it will support a synchronous training in practice because we don't need to wait all the workers to finish the training. We just uh, start the server training when any client uh, update arrive to the cloud side. Yeah, so yeah. So after this, uh, so, so this is a basic step for uh, this Earth Cloud collaborative training idea. Yeah, so. Let me see whether there are some questions. Okay, yeah. So this is uh, any question for this for this research? 
Let me see. Okay. You know, how, how much time uh, do I have? Great. Uh, so uh, technically we're supposed to end at 10. So if possible, okay. I'd love to actually open up, you know, questions for the entire talk. Uh, but if you have a few more slides, you know, let me know and I'm sure we can accommodate. Uh, so how about this one? Give me, give me 15 minutes to finish the rest of talk. Because the rest of talk, I have to, uh, maybe I just briefly tell you my idea, right? Uh, so then you, you can read my paper later, yeah. So you can cool. see here, I, okay. I, yeah. Yeah, so I think, uh, well, please go ahead then. Uh, we will keep recording. And although you may see some participants drop off, uh, we will, uh, I will be here until the end of your talk and then we will you know, open up the discussion. Uh, but first, any attendees and participants, the, uh, this is might be a good point to pause and say, do you have any questions uh, in case you have to leave uh, on the hour? Yeah, I'm happy to take any questions. Okay, maybe let me continue. So as you can see, this Earth Cloud uh, collaboratory training, we need some design for Earth device. And we also think about foundation model. So that's why in another research, this is also a paper published around two years, uh, I finished around two years ago. Actually, at that time, we tried to think about how to accelerate the training of giant model on the server side, especially like transformer training. Uh, so our idea here is that uh, we try to think about how to uh, how to do it in and collaborate to is uh, federate uh, and, and later maybe used for federated learning uh, scenario, uh, especially under this framework. So this system uh, is, is very interesting that it's a dynamic training system, it means that during the training, the resource is dynamically changed. It's not like static system because currently almost all the other system, uh, when you start the distributed training, the resource it will be kept the same. For example, you will use the same number of GPUs and same number of uh, uh, same, same memory costs. So here, uh, my idea is that we can use progress training and freeze training so the freeze training is the idea that during the training, you can freeze some of the layer, especially the layer close to the input. For example, for this one, like the transformer encoder, if we freeze some of the layers, uh, what we can do is try to, uh, because when, when we freeze this layer, the memory cost will be largely reduced. So uh, by this way, um, my idea here is that we can reduce the, uh, the pipeline, for example, here, but at the first beginning, we put entire model into eight GPUs in a single pipe. And once we freeze some layer, we can shrink the pipe into just four, lamp, four GPUs. Um, and here you can see some GPU become available. So what we can do is further add some new pipes. So by this way, we announce the parallelism of data, par data, compute, uh, uh, data uh, parallelism. So here is a, uh, actually it's a hybrid distributed system, meaning that we have pipelining, uh, we also have data parallelism. So by this way, you can see we further shrink the model and we add more pipes. We enlarge the parallelism. We further shrink the model. And finally, you can see each GPU may only hold part of the, uh, hold, can hold the entire model because most of the layer are frozen. Uh, yeah, so this is the basic idea. And this, this system has around 10K lines of code and also uh, released to, uh, it's a collaboration with PyTorch team. Uh, actually, you can see this blue text, a uh, blue curve. So this is the throughput of the system. Meaning, throughput means the sample of seconds it can take. Uh, so, uh, so you can see as time goes in different epochs, uh, the throughput continues increase. So this is a this is quite different from existing system that only has static throughput. So by this matter, we can accelerate training into uh, three times larger around three times larger for uh, like bird training and, and even including vision transformer. So now you can understand uh, how we can construct the entire system once we have some experience in foundation model and also the uh, knowledge transfer between small and foundation model. So my idea here is further push this direction and to try to accelerate training for foundation model, especially accelerate the transfer to the small models. So by this way, we can have more uh, accurate, more efficient urge AI, especially for federate training. Yeah, so that's the uh, that's why we also need to do foundation training to boost the entire framework. Uh, but currently, we don't have a general framework that can collect all the dots 
I just mentioned, like the lottery transfer idea and the foundation model acceleration. So hopefully in the next we can find we can we can finish all the building blocks like the observation, observability and the monitoring. So currently in our company we try to develop another component. So once we have it, we can easily do monitoring, diagnose and control. Once we can control, we can launch the giant model training and put the performance for uh, smart uh, for the small model. So that's the basic idea here. So next I will use uh, maybe just a few minutes to cover another uh, topic. Yeah, I, I actually I have two topics. I think I don't have time to uh, talk about all the other two methods. As I, just, as, as I just mentioned, we have four directions, like the system and also the algorithm design, like the urge cloud collaborative machine learning algorithm design. And here for this third direction, actually we also met a lot of issues in practice because we don't have enough labels. So we call this label deficiency issue. So how we can train a uh, machine learning model that may uh, under this setting that we do not have enough label. And so this framework just try to solve it in uh, to tackle the label deficiency. Uh, actually, uh, since we don't have enough time, so I, I basically tell you the con uh, concept here. So here we uh, directly use uh, uh, the framework uh, called SINSAM, actually is published by uh, Kai Ming from uh, who is also the ResNet author from Facebook. So the idea that we can take an image as input, but so we can encode the image uh, in different augmentations uh, and then put it into the encoder. And then we have a predictor. So the symmetry score here is just quite to quantify the distance between these two uh, X, X, Y, and S2 as input, because since they are from the same image, for example, this is different resolution, different direction of the dog, but still they are the same dog. So we can try to minimize the distance. So this is the basic uh, idea here. And also the scene time framework is very easy to implement in practice, just a few lines of code uh, to calculate the distance in a symmetric way. And also uh, the argumentation is just the existing APIs. We can directly pass for, for to edge and F and edge, like encoder and decoder, then we can calculate the distance. So it's very uh, easy to use. So that's why we pick this framework and plug it into federal learning setting. And actually we can view the client training as the self supervised learning matter. And for server optimization, it's still the same as traditional federal learning. And we run some elementary uh, preliminary experiment with that. And we show that the gap actually is very small, even in federal learning setting when the data is long ID. So uh, in this work, we further improve the personalization and resource issue. For example, we have uh, uh, two models like personalized model and global model. We try to quantify and, and regularize these two models with different loss functions. So essentially the idea is try to make it personalized and more efficient. So since I don't have time, maybe you can read my paper. And, and also actually here, this uh, algorithm is also compatible to our FedML ecosystem. So essentially we can plug in the algorithm uh, to the algorithm layer of FedML ecosystem. So in my research, the flavor is that I hope every algorithm developed in FedML company can be directly used by the system rather than the, uh, the many research, they have different pieces, different block building blocks, but they cannot combine together as a, as, as a powerful system. So here we, we do have some useful component for FedML ecosystem. For example, we have some self-supervised trainer by using this self supervised trainer, maybe we can mitigate the label deficiency issue. Uh, but in practice, normally what we do is try to add more labels on the server side so that we can boost the label deficiency on the client side. Or sometimes, uh, actually, we recently submit, uh, we recently have a paper get accepted to ACL. Uh, that's a later language processing problem. So in that NLP problem, we can see that we can get some user feedback. So user feedback can directly be used as labels. So, I mean, in both client side and server side, we can directly use different unsupervised learning measure. And finally, we can combine them to add, as combine the labels from the client and also the labeling effort from the cloud. So finally, we can have a semi-supervised learning pipeline that can mitigate the label deficiency issue. So this is the methodology that I'm doing it uh, at FedML try to uh, try to tackle the problem in practice. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, so here's a figure to show you that even in non-ID, we can still see the accuracy. It can also get converged. So if we add some labels, I think the performance can be further boosted. So that's why 
uh, we think this uh, direction is very promising, even in federal learning setting. Yeah, so finally, I will briefly introduce uh, the security part. In the security, uh, actually, uh, this is a very important problem in federal learning. Uh, so you can see the three previous three directions, including the scalable system design, uh, like the Earth Cloud collaborative training on resource constraint devices, and the third direction is about label deficiency, how we can design the entire system framework. And finally, here, we hope to focus on security. Uh, and we also, uh, in, in Fenema, we do have some researchers fully focused on uh, crypto, uh, like uh, crypto uh, kinds of algorithm and also like blockchain research try to, uh, especially here is based on info, information theory. So this is also direction that my uh, advisor in USC, uh, actually he's very uh, senior in information theory. So he brought a lot of insight into this domain so here, uh, I want to highlight this algorithm. Uh, this is published in this year, MLCs. Uh, we presented uh, a, a two weeks ago in, in Bay Area. So this, uh, actually, this ba uh, basic, uh, this uh, problem actually we want to solve is this stress model, meaning that the server is honest, but very curious to know what the raw data on its client. Um, and also there may be a fraction of users that, uh, colluding together to uh, gather raw data. So uh, the basic uh, requirement in practice that we hope the server cannot see the raw data, uh, the raw uh, gradient, the raw update from each client. For example, the client user one uh, finishes the local training won't synchronize the way to the server. Then the current federal learning, the issue is that the server can directly see the raw model. So maybe there's a probability that it can invert this raw model and get the raw data. So in order to solve this problem, screw aggregation is a, uh, actually it's a must in practice. Uh, for example, the, the basic idea that the server can only get the sum of all the clients update, but the server cannot see the individual update from each client. So there are general, there are two solutions are very promising in practice. The first one is trust execution environment. Uh, especially SGX from Intel. So the idea here that we can put this operation, actually this mathematical function into this TE. So by this way, uh, it can view as a container. So this container fully encrypt all the computational process. Then the server itself cannot see what's happening inside. So the server cannot get the individual update from the client. So the server can only finally get, get the road uh, update aggregated model and then do uh, and train another round. Another idea actually is based on information theory. I want to do multi multi-party compu uh, multi computing uh, to solve this problem. Actually, our uh, research in this direction is more based on the second solution. It's not like we do not need to rely on any hardware. We try to solve it in a, a generalized software uh, manner. So the basic idea that of in skill aggregation, like just multi-party computing, is that we add some mask into each client. For example, if the row model is X1, we add a Z vector, which is a mask to this X1, then we can encrypt it. If the server cannot see the row X1, uh, but, the, but the beauty of this algorithm is that it can cancel out all the Z uh, on the server side. Uh, if you look at here, uh, let me give you an example. Yeah, if you look at here, the so Z vector, if you sum up all the Z vector, uh, it will make the X, uh, the submission of xi and the submission of xy make them equal. Yeah, so this is a, um, actually it's based on some coding theory, especially encoding and decoding. Uh, for client side, it's just uh, some encoding theory and, and server side, some decoding theory. Yeah, so in this paper, let, let me highlight some key features. So you can see from uh, the original state of the art, we all normally need to do some uh, random generalization. Actually, this is very, uh, complex function on the server side to uh, cancel out uh, to cancel out the mask. So our idea here is that we do not need this uh, very intensive computing. We we use different uh, encoding theory, uh, in different coding theory. So we make the process like this manner. We first encode, we first encoding and get mask and share to other clients. And actually, this encoding uh, is a theory that developed by our lab called. Uh, we, we previously we have a paper publishing information theory conference, and then we reuse it under this setting, uh, but we change uh, some system design. 
So essentially, after this mask sharing, and then uh, the client side just up, uh, encrypt this uh, using this mask, this coding, and the server side can directly cancel cancel it out. But you can see the beauty here is that so we do not need to do very complex computation here. The cancel is very just a uh, just a sum operation. So we don't need to do any decoding kind of operation. So by this way, we can uh, largely accelerate the decoding part, decoding time, make it more efficient on the cloud. If the decoding is too uh, time consuming, it will drag down the entire training speed. So I think this is the first key feature in our framework. And as you can see here, we reduce the complexity from uh, n square or n multiply n log n uh, to just the log n. So this is uh, make it a uh, state of that. And also we can further, uh, we are the first algorithm in this domain to make it asynchronous training, meaning that the client side can maintain a buffer K, which is much smaller than the number of users M. We can directly aggregate every K, uh, every, from every K client, but still can guarantee uh, the security in security aggregation. Yeah, we have some proof to demonstrate it. Uh, and for system design, actually we already um, uh, make this also work in FedML framework. Uh, actually, especially in, uh, in mobile system, we have a C++ implementation, uh, make it uh, make the system API very easy to use in practice. Uh, so, and also on, on, on client side, we have a multi-processing, try to overlap in the encoding and training process. Uh, for example, when you train, you can still use simultaneously, you can do the uh, encoding, it generates a mask, and then later exchange with other client. Yeah, so by this way, you can see here, we can overlap some computation and make the urge device more efficient. Yeah, and yeah, finally, you can see the uh, the performance get 10 times faster than existing baseline uh, in terms of the different dropout. Because in practice, if you look at the wireless communication setting, especially with smartphones, uh, the smartphone setting, uh, normally the dropout is very high, around more than 10 percentage dropout. So by using our method, we can accelerate training, especially in the aggregation part of the server side. Yeah, so this is the, uh, the basic uh, screw aggregation kind of research. Actually, in FedML, we also have another direction that is based on blockchain. So uh, this is a little bit different to guarantee the security and privacy. Uh, we use, um, uh, for example, some common practice in blockchain, especially like smart contract to uh, grant his contribution of the uh, different user. Actually, this is a direction already started two years ago. So this is a diagram I directly uh, cut from this paper. Uh, this is not my paper, but I, I can see that uh, from today, uh, two years past, th this becomes a very useful direction to guarantee uh, the user privacy and also especially the marketplace I just mentioned. So on the blockchain, we can train the uh, trade, uh, the model and trade different people's private data sets and also proof of the contribution. I proof the contribution actually that is very key step. We should assign fair uh, number of tokens to different uh, contributors. Yeah, so this is the first direction blockchain and screw application. Yeah, that's my all my talk. Yeah. Thank you. Great, Sorry. hey, oh. thank you. Right, thank you so much, Chao Yang. That was a really nice coverage of uh, a really wide array of uh, federated learning aspects and issues. You know, multiple algorithm systems, software, and privacy issues are uh, all in one talk. Uh, and uh, you know, I I think my questions will not you know be able to do justice to the entire breadth of things you've covered today. But I want to just open up the discussion session with uh, one question that's maybe a little bit on the future of where federated mm -hmm. learning is going. Uh, mm -hmm. And like, like there is a, I think I see a trend towards FL evolving beyond mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the very initial setting, which was the Fed average setting, right? You do SGD mm -hmm. and you average yes. uh, weight. But as you've mm -hmm. indicated, right, be, uh, there is a, uh, Oh, and before I keep speaking, um, it looks like uh, Eric, you raised your hand. Let me uh, let me bring you into the the meeting for a second. Okay. Yeah, Eric has a question. Hi, Professor Eric Shin. Actually, no, Chiron. Why don't you finish your question, and I will follow up. Okay. 
Great. So maybe my question is actually the one that you might ask, but I was about to ask, right, that uh, uh, there's a trend moving beyond the Fed, rate, uh, Fed average setting, which is the averaging of, uh, you know, your, you, you do SG locally and you average model weights, right, to more sophisticated uh, uh, combinations of uh, maybe what I might call model and algorithm co-design. You indicated one, which is, for example, having a teacher, maybe some kind of teacher-student relationship between a large model yes. uh, and smaller yeah. models on the edge. And then mm -hmm. I think, you know, uh, Eric might even ask questions about uh, other types of models like mixture of expert models, variational, um, you know, inference applied to these kinds of models. Uh, so mm -hmm. that, that's like, you know, one trend in, in federated learning that as it evolves mm -hmm. beyond the initial Fed average formulation. And then there's mm -hmm. a second trend, which I think is, uh, uh, you brought up, for example, blockchain in, in federated learning. And this is an mm -hmm. example of a larger trend that I call uh, different economic incentives or rewards for different participants, right? Yes. Uh, so, yes. Yes. so we've yeah. assumed, you know, in federated learning for the last few years that there's a homo... Mm -hmm genius mm. uh, incentive for every participant, like every smartphone user, you know, benefits yes. from better uh, image taking or, or, you, know, mm. you, know, or like, you know, computer vision application. Every hospital mm. wants to uh, get a better model for their cancer prediction, you know. But mm. then what happens when different uh, model, different people have like, uh, for example, in, in, for example, the federated learning, uh, vertical federated learning scenario, there's different mm. types of data at each participant. And some participants may say, well, maybe my data is more valuable in a certain mm. way. Like economically, you'd have to believe that's the case. So these are just two examples of trends, right? Different model and algorithm combinations and different set of economic incentives for federated learning. And my question was, where do you as a, as, as a clearly, you know, uh, uh, very involved in the federated learning research and even commercialization, where do you see the trends uh, going forward? Yeah, yeah, this is a very big question, actually. Uh, it's not just a research question, it's more like a business question. Actually, when, when we raised fund, funding recently, we see always ask this kind of question, what, what, how can we view the future, right? Actually, I, I already uh, introduced my vision here. Uh, actually, I view it as, uh, actually, we implement this future in this three-layer design. Uh, so I, I actually, I, my talk recently, uh, just now actually, just focused on the infrastructure layer, right? So in the future, what I can see is that uh, uh, the, the bar of the developing machine learning models become very, very low, especially today, you just apply deep learning, you can get a very high performance model in many scenarios. So I can view that uh, people already generate a lot of applications here, uh, but in the future, people may not have enough data, especially private data. So uh, my view here is that we first need to standardize all the AI application. So that's why we need the AI application layer to make every application standardized. And then later people just plug in their computing, for example, their computing resource or their data resource and to change the model. Because the code itself does not, is not valid today, right? You can, you can directly get the source code of the model architecture and also the training tricks from GitHub, but you don't have data, you don't have GPU powers, right? So hopefully in the future, I can try to connect the GPU power and data resource with this open source code and finally, you make it as a data economic or model economic so that people can directly collaborate together and we can try to collect different communities. So this is a, a future I, that I can see from the business or production level. Uh, but for research, as, as you mentioned, that federal learning may not be the only solution for privacy preserving AI, right? People can also provide a, a lot of other uh, design for trustworthy AI. I think that's also direction uh, in our, uh, especially in USC lab, my uh, PhD writer is, is also trying to approach in that direction. So we can see many potential solutions. For example, we can have some homo uh, homomorphic encryption kind of measure can also do uh, multi-party computing. It's not necessary to be, to make it a federated matter. Maybe sometimes we also need some centralized training, but we still need to try to preserve the privacy. So from tactical side, I can see that uh, computational computing, maybe that is the future. For business side, I hope to build a community, especially data economic. Yeah, that, that's my vision for the next five years, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Thank you for the answer. Um, maybe I'll turn it over to Eric, uh, if you still had a question to ask Chaoyang. 
Yeah, thank you, uh, Chao Yang. Very nice talk. I'm mean, glad to see you here. Um, you. A very uh, small technical question, uh, almost mm -hmm. like a confirmation. So in your uh, overall federal framework, you know, both algorithmic and system uh, and system wise, mm -hmm. uh, is the basic assumption a data parallel paradigm where you collect, you know, updates, mm -hmm. you know, from all clients, and then mm -hmm. the way you aggregate the message. Uh, mm -hmm. in a way that aggregates them you know, additively or weighted additively. Or there is another assumption that, uh, for example, you know, I have uh, two agents, you know, uh, say two drums. One carries mm -hmm. the camera that see the seaside you know, of my apartment. And the yeah. other drum, you know, have a camera that sees the desert side of my apartment. Yeah. Right. So these yes. two apartment side view will be obviously completely different. They complement each mm -hmm. other. Uh, yes. So uh, uh, I wonder uh, in your FL framework, you know, uh, mm -hmm. are you taking a model parallel framework, you know, in learning, or are you taking, you know, a, a, a different framework? Yeah, actually, we can answer this question from two perspectives. If you uh, think from the system perspective, like data parallelism, model parallelism, and even pipeline parallelism, actually. As just my uh, the two research I mentioned, like the fatigated kind of idea is like the model parallelism, means that we split the model into two parts. One part is on client, that client will try to extract a feature special, specialized for this view. Another client specialized for different view, and then we combine these two features to train the model, right? So mm -hmm. that is model parallelism we used. And on the cloud side, as, mm -hmm. as I mentioned, if I want to train giant model mm -hmm. and by leverage the feature from client, I also lead kind of pipeline training. Mm -hmm. uh, I know your research group has an alpha uh, automated parallelism framework. Yeah, I think that's very helpful for the giant yeah, model. I was actually very curious about your model parallel framework. How did you do that? For example, uh, in model parallelization in the fat learning setting, what's mm -hmm. your prescription for the communication, mm -hmm. like the message uh, or the updates uh, uh, between different uh, clients? Uh, are they to be centralized in the server or there are different ways of aggregating them? Yeah, currently many uh, based on parameter server PS-based aggregation, we mm -hmm. just synchronize each client's weight. For example, in this figure, I, I think this is still the mainstream in, mm -hmm. in practice, we landed into practice. Okay. And uh, and also as, as Shiron just mentioned, the vertical federated learning is also a, a space that we try to combine different feature space so work mm -hmm. for meaning that we have two parts of the model and we transmit the intermediate results, but mm -hmm. still can guarantee the privacy. So that is kind of model parallelism. So in, we call it horizontal federated learning means that we have different samples on different clients. So this is more like a model, uh, more like data parallelism in uh, compared to cloud computing. But mm -hmm. if you compare to the work of federated learning means that we have different feature space, that is model parallelism, mm -hmm. uh, which is exactly the same as the cloud computing. I see. Yeah. So your your vertical parallelism uh, or a uh, fat mm -hmm. L uh, uh, is if I use one word to uh, characterize mm -hmm. the aggregation, it is not concatenation rather than um, you know a uh, weighted sum, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. For that model parallel, then uh, depends on what kind of model. For example, for GPT, uh, GPT, uh, GPT, that's a uh, boosting tree kind of model. You normally need to. Uh, uh, to transmit the histogram, but for neural network, you just transmit the maybe the activation map. That, that's enough. So for different model, normally we need different training uh, optimization measure or different uh, security measure like homomorphic uh, HE kind of uh, homomorphic encryption. So okay. I mean, in this domain, normally we first have the data or model parallelism and even pipeline parallelism designed for it, and then we check where we may leak the privacy, and then we design security for it. So that's the way we do research so and solving the problem for mm -hmm. this domain. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks for confirmation. Yeah, thank you. All right. Uh, now I'm gonna open up the for for questions to the rest of the audience. Uh, thank you all, by the way, for staying <laughs> over the uh, projected time. Uh, we all appreciate it. And if you have any questions, again, uh, please either use the raise hand function or type your question into the Q&A box. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> hey, hi, hi, Eric. So may I ask you a question? Sure. 
Yeah, so actually my advisor, actually he's now my co-founder at Fanimail. He's the CEO, uh, he called, his name is uh, Professor Sam Westmacher. So he will travel to your city, I guess, next week. So oh. maybe, yeah, can he also give a talk there? Uh, absolutely. Maybe he's, uh, actually, next week, uh, well, unfortunately, next week, I'm going to be out of town, you know, uh, to... Uh, maybe not next week. I think he's the first week of uh, October. And that's perfect. Yeah, then I will be in time. I'd be happy to receive him. Yeah, maybe maybe you can also discuss a little bit about the startup because I know you are also doing startup for for this real training in, on the cloud, and right? mm -hmm. we are on the earth. So maybe we are complementary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Happy to discuss. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah, you can uh, ask him uh, and yourself to uh, send me uh, an email, and then we can yeah. uh, carry the thread over there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. he he will try to uh, discuss with some VC and customers there. Interesting. You you are trying to build a smart city there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. Well, uh, I think with that, let's uh, conclude this uh, very nice uh, colloquium. Very uh, again, let's you know thank our speaker here and. Mm -hmm.